Welcome to Ron and Taste, where we take a look at movies under 50% and tell you what we think about them. And today, just in time for the NFL fucking season, we are looking yes. at Necessary Roughness. 1991 film starring Scott Bakula and Sinbad. This movie only has 33% on Rotten Tomatoes. Rewatching this? I still fucking enjoyed this movie. I'm like, this does what it needs to do. It's simplistic. Exactly. It tells a story. It gets to the fucking point. That's all I need in a movie. For those who don't know what Necessary Roughness is, roughness is um, I think it's like Texas State. They won the national yeah. championships. You know, they're you know yep. national champions, yay. But all the scandals yeah, yeah. somehow conveniently come out at once, you know, from taking bribes. So all the college, all the players – are kicked off the team. And I mean every yeah. single one except for one player. The coaches are fired. Everyone's just gone. And they're trying to build a new team, trying to build a new image. They just got right into it. They just told you what you needed to know. And then they're like, all right, let's get to it. So No bullshit. No, I, I love that about films. Just no bullshit. Now, there is things I'm going to question, you know. <laughs> oh, I can't so, wait to hear. <laughs> so, you know, the coaches, they when they finally got the coaching team, you know, um, they go out and they find out you find Scott Bakula, now mm, main character. Awesome. Yes, uh, thirty-four years old. Um, I do question the age. You know, they yeah, still say 50. he they say he's thirty-four, <laughs> but I'm like, hey, ass, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was a high school star. You know, you know, the, <laughs> he won the national, you know, the high school championships in Texas. Blah blah blah. Never went to college to because his dad died, and he yeah. took over the family farm. There's the yeah. backstory. So they go to him yeah. and be like, you know, hey, you never went to college. Do you want to come play? Now, I'm thinking, you know, you're 34, and I'm doing 34 in quotes. You know, I mean, yeah. I remember once being like 34, and yes, your body can't take as much. Um, but, you know, he's kind of questioning. He's like, you know, I, I, I left that life behind. You know, I don't know. And then uh, the defensive guy is just like, listen, you stay here with your high school trophies. All of a sudden, Scott Bagley gets this look like he's mad. Like, you called Marty McFly chicken. And he's like, what did you say to me? <laughs> like, that's all it yeah. took. <laughs> also, also, really quick, and then, you know, I just want to address the fact that, like, he, he quit school and then went to go take over because his dad died. He just absolutely had to take over the fucking farm. And boy, does he leave that farm real easily. Fuck it. Fuck my dad's farm. I am going to go play college ball yeah. for a team that has no players um, yep. and just <laughs> relive my glory days. Oh. Yeah, out of nowhere. Looking like the Marlboro man, too. Smoking cigarettes, throwing footballs that, like, apparently are, like, freaking laser beams and shit like that. I mean, but to your point earlier, like, when they first introduced him and said he was 34 years old, I was like, my ass is this man fucking 34. This guy is in his late 40s, early 50s. 100%. All the players, none of them look like they're in college. Now, with Scott no. Bakula and Sinbad, you know, those two... Also Sinbad. They're, 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 but there's an explanation. You know, they gave us, you know, an explanation of at least them being older. You know, Sinbad has one year, of, coincidentally, one year of eligibility left. You know, he's going for his doctorate. It's like he's How convenient. going for He's like, let me risk it all to play, again, football, who I haven't practiced, you know, and again... We're in Not our 40s. Shape. You know what? I mean, there's only so much your bodies can take from not practicing every friggin' day. I get that right, some players exactly. are in their 40s, but they are trained. Someone who hasn't yes. done it. But, yeah, none of them look like they're in college. Jason Bateman maybe the closest yes. one. And I do mean yes. the closest one. You got all the stereotypes. You got the samurai who just all of a sudden just wants to drop kick everyone. You got the drill sergeant who yells. You got the twins who hates everyone, hates themselves, but they're there. Like every stereo like I don't remember a single character's name. I don't. It's like samurai, drill sergeant, twins, Manu Manu, I think is the only name I know. Kathy and the dude I don't from Hudson ca- Hawk, man. The dude from fucking Hudson Hawk was randomly in this shit. The big fat muscly dude with the blonde hair and the mullet. And yep. I was like, oh my God. I was like, it's it's weird these people keep showing up in these terrible movies that we're talking about. <laughs> Uh, they keep chained together, but yeah, you're right. It had all the cliche characters in it. It was fucking fantastic. We get introduced to the dean, who basically oh hates God. football. The Larry evil David. dean. <laughs> yes. The again, another stereotype. He's already won this. But you know, the football program is done. I mean, they are fielding 17 players. They they said that Rob Schneider, who's also in this movie, <laughs> said you know because they're going both ways. I'm like, I don't. Yes. And by the way, 
I don't follow college ball, so I don't know what's legal and what's not. I don't think you can field the team with 17 players, even though some, you know, I know they said some players are playing both ways. Yeah. Um, I like, I, I don't know if that's legal. I could be wrong. Let us know. <laughs> but anyhow, I, <laughs> so anyhow, the Dean going back to him, he's yeah. one, you know, he, he hates football, whatever reason, you know, and then he's just still making their life a living hell. It's like, Yep, these kids' GPA went below average. Cut them. Not, not what a dean should do. Like, hey, let's get these kids some tutors. Let's, you know, get them help. Let's see if they get their GPA up. What a normal dean or teacher should do. They're like, nope, fuck it, kids done. You're, you just hit below the whatever that C line. You cannot play. You're done. Mm -hmm. Like the worst dean possible. But yes, another stereotype. <laughs> How does that benefit the dean, by the way, to like eliminate? Uh, a program in his university that is generating revenue? I don't know. There's that side comment. He felt like the money should go to a lot of the other side programs, which I'm not against as far as, you know, yes, there's a lot of other programs that do need money. But as we, sure. if you know college football, especially college football in Texas, yeah. football brings the money. These Correct. guys, you know, that state loves their college ball. You see those games sold out no matter how bad that team is. Um, yes. So, yes, you know what? When you bring in the money, you get the money. You know, that's the sad realization of life. So, yes, yes. I don't know why, though, this dean had it in for this football program. They, it was already done. You know, like I said, they were fielding 17 players. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, no, he just he just had to be the weasel. You know, they just needed a weasel in this movie. So. Yeah, a foil uh. for, the, uh, for the good guys. <laughs> For the, for the tryhards that were uh, on this team that were like, yeah, we're going to do everything we can. I never, I still don't understand how the samurai guy was any benefit to them in any way whatsoever. All he was responsible for was getting personal flags. Personal, All like, right. How, how were any of these players? I want you to think about this. So, yes, the samurai <laughs> was drop kicking and kicking everyone's ass. You know, flag, yes. flag, flag. They had a wide receiver who could not catch a ball. Now, yeah, he did not catch still. a ball to the <laughs> final game. So, let's mind you, he played nine games in a preseason of not <laughs> catching the ball. So, I'm like, yeah. there comes a time where you, you know, where you just <clears throat> release a player. You're like, you're not good enough. I mean, to your point, you talk about Scott Bakula throwing bombs. Remember, the guy couldn't catch it, and he <laughs> threw it so hard, it got stuck in the guy's yes. helmet. He's like, well, at yeah. least she caught it. So, yes, you have a receiver <laughs> who cannot catch a ball. You have a defender who basically drop kicks everyone. Um, yeah. You don't have a kicker yet, which we're going to get into. And your best player, you know, you have somewhat of an offensive line for Manu Manu and Sinbad. Yeah. And yeah. that's it. That is it. You don't have a running game. You have not. I don't even know what Jason Bateman played. I know he was on the team. I don't know what he played. I don't know what You're he right. did. You're right. I have absolutely no idea. The military guy was like their running back, I think. That I picked up on a couple times. But, uh, yeah, everybody else, I had no fucking idea. I had no idea. I knew Manu Manu was the center. Um, I think Sinbad was the tackle, like on both ends. Um, and that was it. Yeah. So, speaking of Sinbad, you know, so... Obviously, one of the side stories is they want the QB, Scott Bakula, I forget his name in the movie, but, you know, to this has to be your team. Paul Blake. Paul Blake, Paul Blake. thank you. Yes, they I wanted Blake, now. this needs to be your team. You know, in one of the first games, the two, two running plays doesn't work. Blake calls an audible and, you know, pass. They missed. The receiver who can't catch a ball, guess what, didn't catch a ball. And the coach yep. gets mad at him. The, he did what the coach told him to do. This is, should be your team. But anyhow... They're losing oh, yeah. their fights. You know, everything's happening. And then Sinbad, you know, is trying to, you know, control. Now, mind you, Sinbad is a teacher at yes. this college. Yes. And then all of a yes. sudden he's like, you know what? We got to let loose. We got to pate. You know, typical Sinbad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always remember that line in the trailer. I do too. And then of course. they all go out for a drink. You know, that's their thing. Yeah. Now, mind you, Sinbad is a teacher, uh, more of an adult. Um, and he's drinking with his probably has kids. students. Probably has a family. He probably does have a family. He probably does have kids. But let alone, you know, which that's fine. You go drink. But he's taking out kids that he's yeah. students. You know, again, mm -hmm. isn't this a violation? Like, no teacher of mine ever took me out for a beer. I went in a mine. Like, yeah, fuck it. Let's have a beer. But still. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And you go into this rough and rowdy. It, it Basically, and I made this comment out loud, how this turned into Roadhouse. All of a sudden, like in the middle of this movie, it's like, and now it's Roadhouse. Um, 
but like Scott Bakula like straight up punches what I assume to be a 21 year old kid uh, a couple of times in the face and like leads this whole like ridiculous brawl and people getting thrown out. I mean, yeah, it was uh, the adults definitely not acting like adults. No, and you had the two adults, you know, obviously they're chit chatting. Get on top of the bar and jump into the crowd. Like, I didn't know I needed Scott Bakula and Sinbad jumping off a bar trying to fight. But I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. I'm all in on this. <laughs> like, the two 40 year I'm sorry, 34 year olds, wink, wink, yeah. are jumping off who, you know, they joke their bodies are sore. They're like, let's just do this risk taking thing. Which, by yeah. the way, this bar, Billy Bob's, um, the bar with its own indoor bull riding. <laughs> Yes, which I imagine is a very common thing in Texas. Uh, and I commented is it? on no, that when I saw it. With real bulls? No, to. I'm sorry. No, no, there's no way. They just can't let people. I, are these professionals riding the bulls? Can you just go get drunk and ride a bull? I have questions. because it sounds like they, Texas to me. Yeah, you know what? You're, you're right. I'll, I'll get, you know what? I'll give you that. But I, I, I think, like, where's the safety violation? Just like, how many have you had to drink for? He's under the limit still. Put him on the fucking bull. I don't know. Oh, my God. God, yeah, I, when you put it that way, somebody could get killed. And I'm sure they do, but I mean, fuck it. It's, it's a Texas. bar in Texas, dude. It's fucking, don't mess with Texas. They don't fucking care. <laughs> That's a fucking Luli. I'm not surprised. Like, I was like, at first I was like, wow. And I was like, oh, wait, it's Texas. And then I immediately was like, this is fine. <laughs> this wouldn't exist anywhere else. Because, uh, like, when you go to a thing. regular bar, yeah, like, when you go to New England bar and there is, like, a mechanical bowl, there's, like, padding and there's stuff where obviously they know you're going to fall off not here it's just the dirt and a wild animal and if you fall off that wild animal could come for you and like gore your ass too uh and all that you know with drinking mixed together so i don't know the early 90s were a crazy time they were smoking indoors uh nobody gave a shit it's kind of like new hampshire yeah, yeah. so yeah the football team uh, starts off 0 and 8. Obviously, they can't win a game. They can't do anything. Blah blah blah. Um, they invite. Uh, they get partake in a scrimmage against like the uh, local penitentiary, um, and all these convicts come to play them. Which mm -hmm. I question, like, who released the fucking convicts to play a game where you can hit people? Obviously, it's to have fun cameos because you have like Dick Buckus, Evander Holyfield, yeah. Jerry Rice, so on and so yes. on. And then later, like in the final game, they're they're sitting in the front row. I'm like. All right, who allowed the convicts to sit in the fucking front row? Like, the, you know, the police in Texas just don't give a fuck. No, but anyhow, they, they, they can't don't. score. And this is the highlight of my movie. Uh, they hire Ky Kathy Ireland, who is a soccer player. <laughs> now, before we get into this, yes, 13-year-old me loved Kathy Ireland. Her swimsuit oh, yeah. picture was the first thing I ever posted on my wall, female-wise, once I kind of grew up from all the, the video games, you know, the cartoons sure. and stuff. I'm like, <laughs> like yeah. so when she was in this movie, I'm like, I'm all in. And rewatching this, I'm like, yep. <laughs> She's, I'm still all in on Kathy Ireland. But, yeah, yeah, so they get a female soccer player to be their kicker, which to, I can't remember. This is the first time I felt like a female played football. So that actually felt like a big deal. But, In 1991. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They, allowed, they definitely allowed it. And, you know, they're like, all right, let's do it. And then their ninth game, tying the game with a field goal. Mm -hmm. um, and they celebrate. Though I have a question. This lineman on the other team, knocks her out like basically plows yeah. into her which fyi her. if those who don't follow football that is was well, a roughing the kicker doesn't matter how after you know 15 yards that's whatever. a 15 yard penalty N every no time. flag i mean no flag the samurai gets flags for every fucking drop kick you know the referee's like you know doing like the you know the signals and the oh symbols my God. You know, like <laughs> makes me but, laugh even to this day when he's doing that shit it's like you know kamikaze kick, kick on the kick. line <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Dude, like, so anyhow, the you know, the lineman <laughs> knocks her down, knocks her out, you know, little Kathy Ireland and Manu Mano is trying to like, oh, I'm going to get you. And they hold them back. I'm like, hold on. There's two problems with this. Yes, I understand any man, you know, want to protect a woman, but like you protect sure. your teammates. Well, I, I'm more yeah. pissed about everyone else. Like you're keeping it knocked down. You're fighting. You fight that? for your team. Right. So anyhow, I know, but it was to set up the punchline. You know, because he tells Kathy Ireland, welcome to football. And she gets up and she's like, welcome to foot. I mean, basically kicks, kicks him in the nuts. And they're kicks like, his she nuts can... like 50 yards, man. <laughs> like into his fucking, like into his esophagus. 
Holy you know, shit. So they, they did that just to pay <laughs> off that setup. Uh, they're like, oh, look, she can take care of herself. You know, yeah, you know, she can kick. And he was he, he was in pain the rest, you know, the rest of the... the screams <laughs> of agony are so great, dude. Exactly I'm let alone she had cleats situation. on. Oh yeah, my dude, god! I'd be, I'd be screaming bloody murder too, being like, I, I now no longer have testicles. <laughs> like I've, <laughs> my testicles have been smashed. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, eight year old me, fucking love that shit, man. Fucking love that. Like I thought that shit was hilarious, and I'm not gonna lie, I still kind of think it's funny. Oh yeah, I enjoyed it. Then we get to the final game. Obviously, this team mm-hmm. is now oh eight and one. They're facing the number one seed, never lost, basically. Uh, led by the guy who they got into the fight with in the bar, you know. So, you know, this is the Texas showdown. Texas State versus Texas, you know, big state rivalry. The defensive coach had to take over for the offensive coach, and he's like, win or I'll die, you know, was his final words. You know, just, just like, Yeah! <laughs> he said, all right, I, I kind of jumped the punchline there, but yeah, the offensive, the head coach has oh a heart attack. God. Turns out to be I indigestion. <laughs> indigestion. Yeah. Not a heart attack, but indigestion. But yeah, so the defensive guy who's not had, doesn't have a way with words, and the coach said, <laughs> win or I'll die. I'm like, who the fuck says that to their kids? You know, this isn't some, you know, <laughs> Mighty Ducks moment, you know, just like, <laughs> let's win one for the, you know. I'm just like, no. Dude, just... <laughs> the best part about that line, where it's like, <laughs> Where he's like, I don't want to put any undue pressure on you guys. But his last words were, if you don't win, I'll die. <laughs> what if they lost? I I just just started, dead. Dude, even just while I was watching this, I started laughing my ass off. Because it just then it just cuts to the next scene. And I was like, wait a second. No pressure. But if you don't win, I will die. <laughs> And nobody mentions that again. I don't know why. Yeah, they're done twenty one and a half on Grant. <laughs> I guess he's gonna die. Yeah, I mean like Hector Elizondo that beat me, like, I guess I'll just die now. Like nobody felt the urgency at all in that scene. And I think that, that was meant to be way more funnier than it came across, but I picked up on it, man, and even thinking about it now, it's just so fucking funny. <laughs> And it, you're right. It was just indigestion. Like, then, why did they keep him overnight for testing then? I, I don't know. Just to make it, you know, the dramatic comeback. He can drive back yeah. you know, to the. But, so, anyhow, first half, yeah, they're down 21 <laughs> nothing, And then, you know, so, you know, he's just like, you know, this, nothing is working. This suit doesn't work for me. This doesn't work. And then all yeah. of a sudden, everything that didn't work in the uh, season starts to work. The wide receiver, wide open every yeah. time catches yeah. the touchdown here's what i gotta say so again we get introduced to all these characters in the beginning of the movie correct and you know mm-hmm. all everyone you know if you remember from the beginning every all the kids from the championship team got kicked off except for one and charlie yeah. which they you know mm-hmm. the coaches were looking like oh he's the only one that you know survived you know the cuts and stuff like that why you know he never played it down never did this he's like he just kept showing up like they were proud of him like the coach <laughs> like and you do not see charlie much of anything throughout the, no. there's no real story he's just kind of in the no. background you know no nope. real character development he catches yep. you know like during practice you know the ball that rifles him to the ground and then um he catches the game-winning two-point conversion and i'm like you gave this kid a monumental moment, which rightfully so. This is like the Rudy moment. You know, he comes yes. in for the one play because yep. they, he, it's like Rob Schneider is like, maybe now's not the time to make sure everyone who hasn't played, played. Hey, coach, yeah. I haven't played. You know, so I'm like, <laughs> so they got 17 players and yet two guys never played the whole season. So 15 <laughs> players, my skew, you know, anyhow. So they put Charlie in. He gets this moment. I'm like, wow, you could have built this story up just a little bit for him. Maybe a little bit Rudy moment, but, but like, that was it. He, he shows up in the beginning, he shows up in the end, in the middle, no one fucking cares about Charlie. I'm like, wow, you gave a character no, no one, one remembered the winning yeah. two-point conversion. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the formula, right? I mean, that that's... The, the thing that makes this movie, I think, that probably people hate about it is how formulaic it is. <clears throat> but that's fine. Like, you know, it's all about the delivery of, of the formula. And yes, there are some cheesy things like that, like that. But, uh, you know, just the formula. You know, we, we talked about this. We hinted it at the beginning, and now it has a payoff at the end. And that's all it needed to do. This was just a fun movie, and it did everything it was supposed to. So mm-hmm. I agree, 100%. So that is our review of Necessary Roughness. Did you guys see the film? What did you like about it? Was there anything you didn't like about it? Was there any other football movies you might want us to take a look at maybe during the season? But until next time, remember, it's not how bad you lose. 
It's how good you party! Bambalaya! Bambaruski!